Hey guys, so I just came up with this brilliant idea. You know when your friend asks you for some materials and you're just like, yeah, sure, I could do that. So you fill up your pockets and you walk all the way to their base and drop it off. And then you have to take your blocky little legs and then walk all the way back to where you came from. And you know, you're happy to do so because, you know, you're a good friend and whatnot, but it's a waste of time. Like, what if you had something to do that for you, you know, like... I don't know, like a, a mailing system or something. Yeah, that's right, Benjamin Franklin. Behold, the post office. Yeah, um, I, I understand it doesn't look much like a post office. Uh, I'll explain. So what you're looking at here is a top-down view of a system that accepts minecarts from the outside world, processes it inside, and then spits it out on a separate line. Now. The way it does this is it actually has a bunch of stamps that it reads. Now, as you can see, these ones have A, B, C, D, E, and F, and I'm using renamed pieces of paper. And as you can see, we have A through, or wait, hold on a second. Where's G? Ah, there it is. So yeah, as you can see, we have A through G here, and these represent other people's bases. So if you kind of could imagine this part of the redstone contraption being in a building and these parts going off to other people's bases say you know g lives way over there or f lives way over there uh, e lives this way etc etc and so um, each of these lines will be connected directly to a person's base and they will be acting as a send line and a receive line at the same time so i'll go ahead and show you how this works so let's say for instance uh Person G wants to send a bunch of stuff to person C, and they requested, you know, standard bunch of redstone supplies. And so they go over to their base, they grab a C stamp, and they'll put in the C stamp. And then what they'll do is they will push the button. And it's off to the races. The minecart makes its way across and into the buffer, where it waits for a signal from the observer. It then drops down and runs across the item filters. The signal travels all the way down to a specific line and changes it. And while that's happening, the minecart is waiting for its stamp, and then it gets sent down the line and straight down the C line. And once C receives it, as you can see, they get all of their stuff as well as their stamp back as confirmation that they were the person that was supposed to receive it. And there you go, all is well. So this system is built such that you can send anything from any one of these to any other one of these. So if C wanted to send it, send it back to G, all they would do is put the G stamp in there. Uh, if they wanted to send it to E, they would put the E stamp in there, etc. Um, and they can send it, yeah, from, from anywhere to anywhere. And uh, this buffer is there just in case, you know, a, there's a race condition where a bunch of them want to send it at the same time. Um, and this takes care of most of those race conditions. So yeah, but as you can see, there's this extra little line coming over here that has really nothing to do with the main part of it. And uh, that's what I'm gonna show you next. So the way that I designed this thing, in addition to being a fully remote setup where um, basically the only user interface that a person has is at their base and they send and receive packages, um, just like a normal post office, you should be able to also go into the office in person and uh, send something to another person from there. So that's what this station is all about. And we've got a book with some instructions as well. So you have this uh, empty minecart chest over here and you can put a uh, stamp inside it. In fact, hold on, let me go grab one. All right, so I've grabbed uh, F. So we can go ahead and put F in there along with you know a bunch of other stuff that F requested. And we go ahead and push this button it sends off the minecart chest, a new one gets dispensed from the, this dispenser here, and it gets processed as normal. And there you go, it waits here for the uh, stamp to arrive, and it goes, oh yeah, over to F, and they get their stamp back, yay. So you can see how a system like this can be very useful in a server, especially where people are pretty close together, where um, the uh, space between the bases might be loaded. Um, if they're not loaded, you might want to use uh, portal chunk loaders or something like that. If you want tutorials on that, I will 
link some in the description, or you can let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to do that one for you as well. But yeah, I'm sure you can imagine a scenario where this contraption is enclosed inside a building in a shopping district or a central hub or the spawn chunks and uh, all of these are connected to people's bases and they're sending packages back and forth without ever having to go in person, which I, I think is pretty cool. And of course, as you can see, there are only seven lanes here, so this particular system can only handle up to seven bases, but don't worry, they can be chained and they can be expanded. Um, seven is just an arbitrary number that I chose when I was designing this thing. So yeah, it, it really can be um, as many as you want. Um, this redstone line running on the bottom here, it might need some repeaters um, if you expand it much larger than this. Uh, plus, if you have a really large server with districts, some of these lanes can be used to chain post offices together between districts. And so you would need to, you know, do systems with more than one stamp uh, and that sort of stuff. And, and that gets kind of complicated, but I'm, I'm sure you guys can sort of figure that one out. But if you have a small server with very few members, this is an absolutely perfect little setup. And so without further ado, let's get on to the tutorial. So first off, let's start out by making the item sorters. So because we'll be making a uh, identical design to this one here, Let's go with seven. So first we're going to be making these L shapes, seven of them right next to each other. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And on this top block here, we're going to go ahead and place down seven comparators right next to each other. Did I do this right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right. Okay. And then underneath this L shape, uh, facing the opposite direction, we're going to go ahead and put some repeaters down. And then right behind the repeaters, another row of blocks. Now, on top of this part, we're going to add some redstone on both of these, like so. And then we're going to put redstone torches on the bottom block on this side here. Now for the sorting hoppers. So um, we're going to go one, two, three blocks from this edge over here, and we're going to put down two temporary blocks. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take two hoppers like that, and we're going to uh, face them into the temporary block, and then a long chain of hoppers going all the way to the very end of this structure here. Then we're going to go ahead and break this end hopper so that it's pointing into the temporary blocks or toward the temporary blocks and then we're going to destroy the two temporary blocks. Now from there, what we're going to do is we are going to stand on top of these comparators here and while holding shift, put down hoppers going into the hopper chain that we just created and stop right there. So there you go. That's, that's what it should look like at this point. And now we're gonna put hoppers all along on top of here but very important, it needs to be facing into the comparator. So once again, while holding shift, go ahead and place those hoppers onto those comparators like so. It's very important that they're facing into the comparators because if you have them facing down like so, then uh, the sorter won't work. So make sure, make very sure that all of them are pointing into the comparators like so. So now that we have the standard sorting design all done in place, Let's uh, get our filter items. I recommend actually renaming a filtered item. Um, you cannot use a simple obscure item because, you know, as a post office system, the minecarts that will be running over these hoppers may contain anything. So make sure that they are actually named and unique. So what you're going to need to do is fill these last four slots and go ahead and uh, fill this last slot here to 18 and then go ahead and put uh, your renamed piece of paper. I have mine renamed A through G as normal, but I recommend renaming them anything you want. Uh, the actual server member, members first names, their full names, their IGLs, um, whatever you want. And go ahead and place two pieces of paper into that first slot there. Now, as you can see, when I placed that second piece of paper, it was two for a second and then it dropped down. 
that's because it got filtered down into this bottom part here. Um, don't worry about that, that's supposed to happen. So if you have one piece of paper here, 18, 111, and in the hopper below you have one, then you are good to go. So same thing for B, you're going to go ahead and, oh, hold on, put the filter items in, and then make sure that this slot says 18, and then go ahead and put two pieces of paper. You should see it drain through once, and the hopper below should contain a single paper that says B. So go ahead and do that for all the rest of these. So now that we have all of our filters properly configured, let's go ahead and make use of them. So in order to do so, we're going to be putting down a line of repeaters going off of these blocks here, as you can see opposite to this repeater here, so that when a stamp goes into this filter here and uh, we get our redstone signal strength lengthening down to here, both of these repeaters will go ahead and uh, pick that up. And so those will be going into their own line of blocks. And those blocks will be powering a bunch of upward facing droppers. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put a line of temporary blocks, one block above these droppers, which will help us place a bunch of downward facing droppers on top of them. And then we're gonna, gonna go ahead and remove these temporary blocks. Now those of you with a keen eye may now notice that this is an RS NOR latch array, which means we need to put an item into the bottom dropper that is going to be activated by uh, this item filter here. So I'm using diamonds. You do not have to use diamonds. I repeat, you do not have to use diamonds. You can use literally anything in here, um, any single item. So go ahead and drop a single item into all of these droppers here on the bottom, but not on the top. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be putting down a bunch of blocks right next to that, and then put a bunch of comparators on top of that, reading out of these uh, droppers here. And in front of these comparators, we're going to be adding a line of blocks that they'll go into. And then in front of that, another line of blocks, one block below, and a bunch of repeaters. So in front of all these repeaters, go ahead and add another line of blocks. And then in front of that, another line of blocks, except chop one off on either side there. And go ahead and put some more repeaters down here. This time there's five of them put blocks in front of all of those, then put blocks in front of that, but again, chop off the corners, put down these three, put down blocks in front of these repeaters, and then only in front of this one. And then finally, a piece of redstone dust. So this redstone dust right here is going to represent the very middle track of your post office and they're all going to be separated by one block. So as you can see over here, we can take an output from this block and bring it over to here. Same with the other side, bring it over there. And then from this block, we can take one out this way and lead it this way. So there you go, they're separated by one block. Then over here again, There you go. And now you have this sort of comb shape appearing. So on the other side, we're gonna go ahead and finish that and put redstone dust on top of that. Put blocks over here like so and redstone dust on top of that. So now we have a seven pronged comb. Okay, so now that we're done with the redstone structure, let's get started with the rails. Now this part's a little bit tricky, so uh, pause it if you need to. So First, what we're going to do is we're going to navigate over to this rightmost edge of this comb, and we're going to put a little L shape of blocks here, and we're gonna put three normal rails like this, and they're going to curve this way. Then for the second one, we're gonna put a redstone block that is gonna go in between these two, 
and then these two, to, uh, these two regular blocks to complete this L shape. Then we're going to put a powered rail here and then two regular rails here to create this L shape. Repeat it on this side here. There's that L shape. There's that powered rail. Two normal rails makes an L shape. Once again, redstone block, two regular blocks, a powered rail, and two regular rails to create an L shape. And go ahead and repeat that pattern all the way to the end. All right, so now that you've completed all of these L shapes, what I recommend next is to dig a one deep trench underneath all of these next blocks here and then put down a line of redstone dust. This will actually help with the simplicity of the building. Now go ahead and add two more blocks on the ends of all of these lines and then place a detector rail and another regular rail on each of these. And now you guessed it, more L patterns. Redstone block, two regular blocks, one powered rail, this time another powered rail on this side, and a regular rail connecting these, and these will form an L. If they do not, and uh, instead these two connect, um, then go ahead and power it using a lever. And that will get it to uh, switch over. And uh, that will need to be done for every one of them. As you can see, I don't need to do this. So when I power it, it actually does the incorrect thing. Um, but if yours does this by default, then you're going to need to power it each and every one of these elbow or these like L thingies with a lever. I hope that made sense. If you have any questions about that, put in the comments below. But anyways, this L shape like so, powered rail, powered rail, normal rail, redstone block, normal block, normal block, powered rail, powered rail, normal rail, and do, a, do that for all of these. Oh, and by the way, since I mentioned this lever trick here, and these lines are not making L's correctly, then you might want to come over here and put down a redstone torch on each of these to invert the signal. So that's really no problem. Go ahead and put a redstone torch on all of these areas and uh, that should fix your issues here. Um, oops, but I don't have any of those issues so I'm gonna go ahead and revert that back to redstone dust. And for this middle one, I just realized that a redstone torch has no effect on it. So uh, put the redstone torch there, two blocks above it and two pieces of redstone dust. And as you can see, when I put this last one down, bam, it changes over. So that's one way to get this to actually work. All right, so hopefully now that you're done with that, let's go back to uh, this side of these L's and we're gonna go out two blocks like so and we're going to run all the way back to about here-ish. This is where we start to improvise. And uh, at this top hopper, go ahead and add a line and then we're just going to go ahead and stair step down like so. I think this works. Yes, this does work. And um, we're going to be adding a bunch of rails and powered rails to this thing. Um, I like to go full powered rails, especially since I'm in creative. You don't have to go this fast, but uh, I, I definitely like to. So this is what we're going to do all the way across these hoppers like so. And then two more blocks like so. Powered rail. Oh, and then detector rail on this last part. Then two blocks in front of this, we're going to add a wall so that uh, the minecart hits this wall and falls down onto this block here. Um, and that is going to be a powered rail. We're going to need a solid block here to make sure that it goes. And then, yeah, let's go ahead and power all of these powered rails because currently they're unpowered. So I find the best way to do this is to just replace some of these with redstone blocks, see if it powers everything. Yep, it sure does power everything. Uh, let's go ahead and replace this one with a redstone block and then replace these rails, there you go. And then over here, you can go ahead and put a block on top of this comparator and then put a lever on this side of it. Um, make sure you don't put a lever here 
because that's what happens when you do that. And that is no good. So go ahead and put the lever on this side and that should take care of everything. Oh, apologies about this wall. Uh, it needs to be like that. There you go. And then to loop this line all the way to this side here, we're gonna go out three more blocks like so, and then build in a straight line right over to here and then match up with this first bend right there. I'm gonna put down two power rails here, powered rails all along this stretch like so. And we're gonna go ahead and put regular rails here and then of course regular rail to uh, connect up that part as well. Power that, power that. And this is what your track should look like at this point. Brilliant. All right, for this next part, we're going to need to add in a delay that comes off of the pulse created by this rail here. And we're gonna need a long, long delay to uh, bring that signal over to this powered rail here. And that is to give the filtered stamp some time to uh, travel along all of these hoppers and back into the minecart chest that's gonna be waiting at this rail here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add three blocks here and we're gonna take three full delay repeaters out of this block here into a block down below two more one two three one two three so into a redstone dust and two more repeaters here into another block and then into here another repeater one two three into a block and into another repeater one two three into another block and into yet another repeater on full delay. So in total, you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight full length repeaters going from this detector rail all the way to this powered rail. Now keep in mind that this delay is specifically calibrated for this seven pronged system here. Um, if you decide to add more, then you're most likely going to need a lot more delay. Um, luckily you have all this space to add any, any number of repeaters that you want. Um, but as for the amount of delay that you want, just make sure that it's enough for this first stamp that's going to be uh, getting filtered out. Make sure that it has enough time to get all the way through this hopper chain and then into the hopper mi or into the chest minecart that's going to be sitting here um, before the chest minecart gets sent off. So this right here represents the longest distance that a single stamp is ever going to travel. So make sure that this stamp right here uh, is allowed enough time to get all the way back to the minecart chest. All right, so now that we're done with the rail system, let's uh, actually get this redstone line to use. So we're gonna go ahead and dig another trench. We're gonna go right underneath this rail here all the way until we encounter this right here and we're going to continue digging right underneath here and what we're going to do is we're going to grab uh, another redstone dust into a repeater into a block and then we're going to continue this redstone line all the way under here. So make sure that it's no more than 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, yeah, we can't have this. <laughs> 10, 11. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, we'll put a block there. Take out the signal with a repeater. And then what we're going to do, put down top slabs on top of all of these uh, dro uh, droppers right here and uh, also one down like so there we go and then now we can staircase up like so there we go up 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 oops where did i put that up there up here and then over all of these droppers like so so that right there is our global reset line for our RS Norlatch, pretty cool. And as for this rail that we uh, just broke, go ahead and uh, 
We'll place that back, and instead of powering this one with a redstone block, uh, let's go ahead and power that with a redstone torch. There we go. That should fix everything. And now for the dead letter office, let's go ahead and just excavate a little hole here. Uh, just arbitrarily make it, I don't know, a 4x4, four four, I guess. There's your dead letter office. And then uh, go ahead and send a line from this end portion. This represents uh, a minecart skipping through all of these filters and then being brought all the way to here into the dead letter office. So um, just for safety, we want to put three regular rails and then the rest of them powered. And then at this point, you can go ahead and put down a redstone block to power them all. All right, so if you don't want any of the extra features of the post office, such as the ability to uh, send a package from the post office itself or to have a buffer for um, any number of race conditions that might happen when multiple people are sending packages at the same time, then actually you're done right here. Um, this is a hands-off system and you may only be called in once in a while to uh, maintain the system if things get backed up due to multiple people sending things at the same time. And if your server mates have no interest in sending things from the post office itself, then yeah, this is your system done. So yeah, uh, tune into part two, um, which will be coming up right now, uh, if you actually want the additional features that this has to offer. Okay, so for this part, you're going to need to take out a little bit of the track. So let's go ahead and punch out a bunch of this, I don't know, arbitrarily about that much or so. And uh, we're gonna put a single detector rail here and a redstone block, one block away from that and two powered rails so that it makes this V shape here. Then two blocks above that, we're gonna place another block here and then we're gonna make this shape like so. And then we're going to start building down in a stair step, oop, in a stair step formation like so. Powered rail here, detector rail on this block and then powered rails the rest of the way. Then finally, on top of this slanted powered rail, we're going to put a single fence gate. All right, so now that we've redone the rails, let's go ahead and put the redstone in. So I'm gonna just punch out these blocks here and put in some wool, a um, couple pieces of redstone in this L formation, a comparator facing one way, comparator facing the other way, a block in front of this comparator, and a single piece of redstone here. Redstone torch on that block, piston on top of that, and on the face of this piston, an observer facing outward so that its uh, butt, for lack of a better term, uh, is, is pointed into this uh, fence gate. Then we're going to go over and continue this line here. We're going to tap into this line and uh, bring that into this uh, pulse extender. So punch out that block repeater into a block and then into a trench but first let's go on over here block on top of that redstone dust block there repeater there and then we're going to simply stair step down and then redstone dust on top of all that redstone dust on top of this one as well um, that's going to go into a block which is going to go into a dropper and then another dropper facing into it. So in order to do this, we're going to hold shift and then hit right and left click at the same time. There you go. And now you have two droppers facing into each other. We're going to put an item into this closer dropper. I like to use diamonds, but um, you can use literally anything, uh, a stick, or whatever you have lying around, a single piece of cobblestone, a shovel, whatever you want, uh, put it in this dropper here. Then out of the other dropper, we're going to take an output via a comparator going into this sticky piston here. And another quick change uh, on this line, that is the one that's going straight to the dead letter office. We also want this line to uh, trigger this piece of redstone here. So go ahead and replace that with a detector rail as well. It will connect with this one here, 
uh, don't worry about that. That's going to be inconsequential. So don't even worry about that part. So yeah, as long as uh, this is on a full block powering this line here, you should be golden. Now to trigger the other dropper, we're going to be taking a redstone line from this detector rail here. So go ahead and dig out underneath it like so. Place down some redstone, oh, redstone line right there. And we're going to punch out these blocks so that it can come out. Put a block there, another block there, and redstone coming up this way. And then to redirect it to go into the dropper, we're going to put a target block there. Now, if you don't want to use a target block, can't afford it, don't have one, uh, then you can replace it with a uh, regular block and then run the redstone line up like this. But, you know, I, I like to use target blocks because, I don't know, game mechanics, I guess. So there you go. There's your uh, buffer system. Uh, if we want to test it out, we can go ahead and put a cart here. You can see that after a little while, it will get dropped on through. There you go. And it will wait its turn, come along this way, and then it will hit this one because it is uh, going into dead letter office, and it will send whatever next one is there, if there is one. If there isn't one, then it'll just false fi fire and uh, there's no problem at all. All right, so if all you wanted there was the buffer, then you're done here, but if you also want to uh, send something from the post office itself, uh, then you're going to need to add this little line here. So I'm gonna just show you how to do that real quick. So parallel to these blocks here, go ahead and add a line of blocks. And then uh, I think it's like this, yes. So that when it comes around and down, it dumps onto this uh, rail here. You don't want it to dump directly onto here because then it will actually go down or it, there's a chance it could. Um, you want to make sure that it snaps to this rail here. So for this part, go ahead and put down your powered rails all the way up to there and then three regular rails so that it makes this little shape here. Um, somewhere along here, perhaps uh, here, we can add a redstone block. Let's go ahead and do that. Powered rail there. Um, you don't want to put one uh, here for instance, because it might bud power uh, this dropper here. You don't want to put one on top of the dropper. You don't want to put one here. And of course, you don't want to put one here either because it would power this redstone. So um, I figured this is the best place to put a redstone block. So there you go, right there. So that's the part that brings it on over. Then we're going to go ahead and just stair step downward, downward, keep adding powered rails. Uh, you can see this one loses power, so go ahead and just replace that one with a redstone block as well. Down there, and then we're going to dig under like so. And then at this point, you can kind of do really whatever you want. Um, but make sure that you have a gap of a regular rail here, and then a powered rail. Um, that's the one that your uh, empty minecart is going to sit on um, before it gets sent. So, there you go. And now for the part that uh, sends the minecart and then puts a new minecart on the track, you're going to want to put a dispenser, a dispenser here, not a dropper, um, and then punch out that block there. Redstone dust, uh, oh, sorry, shift there, block on top of that one with a button. And then go ahead and dig out underneath there a torch on the side of this block two redstone dust, and then to put it into uh, this dispenser, punch out that block, and put a target block. Now, to cover this all up, you're going to want uh, some floor block, right? In my case, it's sandstone, and you're going to need a slab as well. This is very important. Above this torch, you want to put either a slab or a stair, um, or otherwise some other non-conductive block, uh, or non full block um, because if you were to put a full block there then you would get what is known as a torch burnout uh, which is a feedback loop of uh, you know this torch powering this block powering this which unpowers the torch etc etc um, so you'd want to put a slab here instead 
and then you're free to put uh, regular blocks or slabs in these two spots right there. And so as you can see, when I push this button, this uh, redstone lights up, which powers this um, powered rail. And then after it's powered off, then you can hear this uh, dispenser fire. So to prime the system, uh, go ahead and put a single minecart chest down like that, and then fill this one up with minecart chests. Um, you can also put a hopper into the back of this and, you know, fill it up with like a massive, you know, storage of it. But, uh, you know, not nine's fine too, if you want. So yeah, let's go ahead and test that. You hit it, sends off, and then a new one gets dispensed. And you can see it goes straight into the buffer. And there you go, waits for a bit, moves along, it's empty. So it gets filtered all the way to dead letter office, triggers this again, and then pop, sends the next one through. So yeah, there you go. All right, and that's it everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial and showcase. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Um, if you have any suggestions for other red redstone contraptions or any improvements to this one, I am all ears. Uh, trust me, this is, this is a lot of fun for me. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find use for it. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.